सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा समस्तजनकल्याण निरत करुणा नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर neither a life of indulgence nor a life of denial neither a life of expression nor a life of suppression is the means to attain supreme happiness therefore in the previous two verses bhagwan shankar acharya points out to us that we must have the clarity of the path and the goal the external and the internal this clarity must be there if we want to reach our goal of oneness our goal of happiness our goal of fulfillment therefore he has explained very clearly neither a person who has lived his life in uncontrolled desires and not a person who takes to a severe life of no possessions and torturing his body or even denying the body of its necessities the news of desire does not leave such a person in fact i'm reminded of uh, one of those cartoon jokes one monk hungry traveling went to the restaurant a small little dhaba maybe and uh, after he had eaten he gave the money but the waiter did not bring up bring back the change so he called the waiter he said i have been waiting for so long bring me the change and the witty waiter said the change has to come from within in the same way what bhagwan shankar acharya is pointing out that it is our inner desires with discrimination with devotion when we are free from these desires then only the mind is free to explore the higher now someone when he hears this says see that's why you know i don't follow any extremes i follow the, follow the middle path and what's the middle path a little of indulgence a little of religious activities and this is the common lifestyle of many many people that they do their various worships on a weekday a particular weekday or at home during certain minutes etc or once a while takes a visit to a place of worship or a pilgrimage or does a little bit of charity in midst of the extreme expenses all that people think that i have done my duty towards god so i am religious this is how very often people again delude themselves and bhagwan shankar acharya pulls the carpet under the feet of such people who delude themselves and says gurute ganga sagar gamanam 
व्रत परिपालन अथवा दानम ज्ञान विहीन सर्वमतेन भजति न मुक्ति जन्मशते न भज गोविंद भज गोविंद गोविंद भज मूढ़मते संप्राप्ते सन्निहिते काले नहीं नहीं रक्षति दुक्रिन करने कुरुते गंगा सागर गमनम वन टेक्स लॉन्ग पिलग्रमेजेस फ्रॉम गंगा एंड दैट इज फ्रॉम काशी टेकिंग द वाटर्स ऑफ गंगा वॉकिंग ऑन फुट टुवर्ड्स सागर मींस रामेश्वर व्हिच मींस वॉकिंग from kashi with the ganga jal all the way to the south in rameshwar and then offering that ganga water to the shivalinga that was worshiped by none other than ramchandra ji himself thus there are many such pilgrimages and they are there in all religions of the world certain type of pilgrimages so kurute ganga sagar gamanam and some people take up such arduous uh, pilgrimages others fast take up vows vrata paripalanam they take up fast take up certain vows and what about others some they think that they have done some charity given some donation and they have done their duty towards society towards god and for their spiritual progress but shankaracharya says gyan vihina sarva matena in fact in all matas say in all paths in all religions it is clear that jnana vihina that without knowledge bhajati na muktim janma shatena one can continue to live such a life of so called religious spiritual life today one thinks that one has done a few asanas and few pranayamas and their spiritual duty is done here shankara acharya makes it very clear that even lifetimes of such activities one does not attain liberation and we have already seen freedom from what freedom from the compulsions of desires attachments anxieties worries of our own mind and our dependence on things beings and situations for our happiness so bhagwan says inquire bhaj govindam inquire otherwise we live in a life of self deception thinking that we are walking towards our destination but actually we are only going round and round in circles the clear goal must be understood now here we must see in this verse what does knowledge mean from the highest standpoint it is clear that the truth the reality the infinite self cannot be lost and our nature which is happiness cannot be lost other than due to our own ignorance of ourself our ignorance of our oneness with the infinite our ignorance of our own essential blissful nature and therefore whatever activity we may do until and unless we come to know 
the nature of truth, the nature of God, the nature of the self, that bondage, that limitation, those cravings and desires which is born out of our ignorance and thus makes us feel finite and limited, that ignorance can go only with knowledge, not by any other means. In Atma Bodh, Bhagwan Shankaracharya gives a beautiful example, and Gurudev used to dramatize it. A newly wedded couple have moved to a new city. They are living in their own private flat, and the newlywed husband takes things for granted. He has been boasting around to his friends in his office of how his wife is such a good cook and how wonderful she is, how beautiful she is. Yeah. Somebody just co commented and said, Are Good wives are available at every corner of the world. But somebody laughed and said, but the world is round, there are no corners. Now here was a man proud of his wife and telling everybody, they said, let us meet her, let us meet her. So one day, while they were forcing, he just calls her and says, I am bringing her, I'm bringing my friends over, four or five friends over and uh, they all want to eat lunch at home. She, unprepared, quickly runs to the uh, shopping center, gets the groceries, etc., brings it to the house, quickly cuts the vegetable, throws in the rice uh, to boil, everything, and she quickly wants to make a quick concoction that she can prepare because he's just going to come here within an hour. And she do, does not want to disappoint him and his friends. And after she has cut the vegetables, washed the vegetables, put them in the cooker, and uh, quickly gone and changed into her beautiful sari and uh, combed her hair open and put her tikka to look like a traditional wife, here comes the husband rings the bell and perfect timing, she has just got ready and she opens and greets uh, everybody and gives them the drinks to drink, the fruit juices and the drinks that they want, he gives them and they're all waiting. She gives them some chips and all so that they can already fill their belly. Now when it's time and they have to rush back to office and says that give us some Food, we are waiting to hear, uh, we are waiting to eat. We've heard you cook very well. She said, I'm just bringing. And he tells, go quickly, quickly bring. And bring in the new crockery. He whispers to her. She goes inside, doesn't come out. He rushes inside. She's weeping away. What happened? She opens the cooker. She has done all the work. She has shopped for the vegetables. She had cut them, washed them, put them in the cooker. But they were not cooked because she had forgotten to put the fire on. Just as cooked food cannot be without fire, just like Darkness cannot be removed by any amount of sweeping or throwing buckets of darkness outside. In the same way, no amount of action, good or even holy, can remove our ignorance. Then are all actions, all other practices useless? No. They are a means by which we can quieten our mind, strengthen our convictions, develop our faith, invoke devotion in our hearts. By all that, 
the mind becomes purified and such a purified mind is ready for knowledge. Such a purified mind is then ready for contemplation and meditation to abide in this knowledge. Therefore, Bhagwan Shankaracharya says that if we do a little bit of this and a little bit of that and think that we will be liberated by that, no, without the knowledge of the truth. And this knowledge is not to be understood as mere information. This knowledge is not to be understood as just chanting some mantras. This knowledge is not to be understood as some reading from a book. But whatever these books of knowledge indicate to us, we first intellectually understand and then turn all our attention to discover the truth that is there in the statement of the scripture and the words of the great saints and gurus. And it is with that knowledge which becomes your direct experience, your own direct knowledge that removes our ignorance and ignorance from bondage as well as the sense of finitude, desires and its consequent disappointment and sorrows and attachments. This is why this very verse is so important. However, this verse in a subtler manner also can be understood that these practices that are given by saints, sages, as well as religions, scriptures, etc., they are not useless. But without a right understanding of them, when we just do these actions, again with some hopes and desires, we only compromise even in such sacred practices. Today, for most people, pilgrimages are only to go to places and do shopping. In fact, pilgrimages are those places where saints, sages got their inspiration, got their revelations, they got their uh, enlightenment, or they did austerities with sincerity, with devotion. To go to these places is not only to be able to get those divine vibrations, but to get inspiration from their life, inspiration from the nature there, from the places of worship where they worshipped and got enlightened, where they got inspired, where they got knowledge. And those places are to get that inspiration, to develop that devotion, to develop that faith and get knowledge. In fact, these are places where holy people still live to search them out and get pearls of wisdom from them. This is what pilgrimages are for. But without recognizing the real reason for them, people only do these pilgrimages to fulfill some petty, paltry desires. Rather than going through those pilgrimages so that you develop that willpower through those austerities that you can find peace and happiness without the objects of your desire. And that is what is pilgrimage for. 
and without the right understanding, these days even pilgrimages are for taking selfies. And in the selfies, you only see your face, not anything else. Not even take photographs of that scenic place that can give inspiration. So think about it. What do people do? They go to these places of pilgrimages and dirty those places. They only get become places for eating and for buying trinkets. Noisy. Very often after they leave, leave it filthy. Thus, without understanding the real purpose for pilgrimage, how those pilgrimages must be done. Otherwise, we make a mockery of these pilgrimages and mockery of our own life and very often wasting away our endeavors rather than being productive. So, Kurute Ganga Sagar Gamanam. Not that these pilgrimages are useless. They have a purpose. Do it with the right knowledge. Do it with the right attitude. Do it with devotion. And then these pilgrimages purify the mind. Because Tirtha itself means that which purifies you. It purifies your mind from negativities from clinging attachments, from base desires. When mind is thus purified, it is ready to venture forward to discover the higher. Therefore, Bhaja Govindam. Vrata. A person who is without vows, a person who is without convictions, a person who is without a certain amount of austerity. A person who can say no sometimes to his mind. That person is a weakling. If a person does not have some conviction, some vow in his or her life. Most people nowadays understand vrata means only fasting. And that fasting has become a farce. The day they fast, they sit and gamble. And you ask them why. In fact, it has become a ritual for them. And you ask them why. They say, oh, so that we keep our mind away from food. The whole idea of even fasting from food is that normally we don't have the time nor the focus of mind, because even now, during these lockdowns, the preoccupation of most people is food. Not those who are hungry and don't have food. But the whole conversation revolves around food, 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 food. Sometimes we can at least discipline ourselves and eat only when we are hungry or eat only as much as necessary. And for those who are not able themselves to cook, etc., to accept and eat what comes to them. This is real fasting. Otherwise, they don't eat certain other food and then they feast on something else. All these are different types of fasting that people pick up and think that I have fasted, now God is going to bless me. The scriptures are also clear on how fasting should be done. And that is I'm saying food. But it is not just food. We eat through our eyes. How much and what we watch through our ears. Thus, Vrata, some vow that we've taken up in life to develop our willpower, to develop our resilience, to keep our desire checked. That is the purpose of this Vrata. And Dana, 
Dana is basically that what we have in abundance, we must be able to share. Then only we feel rich. Then only we feel we have plentiful. Then only our mind is free from its obsession and greed for wealth. And wealth earned through right means and shared that wealth is indeed enriching. And such an expansion of heart accommodates in itself love for the many and that is love for God. This is the purpose for these wonderful sadhanas, practices given and they are there in all religions. Yet we make a mockery of it and therefore without right knowledge on how to practice without right knowledge of what is the means and what is the goal that is to be achieved or to what extent these practices can make us closer to the goal and what is that means that takes us finally to enlightenment which is knowledge there must be clarity of the path and the goal and otherwise for lifetimes you can keep on practicing but if we do not complete our practice, then indeed we have wasted our endeavors, however religious we might think they were. And the purpose from all these practices, they are just summarized in these three. Pilgrimages, vows and charity. And all three are supposed to be done together also. When you go for pilgrimage, you must take some vow and you must do some charity. All this has been pointed out by our scriptures. And the great masters have demonstrated in their life. But in all religions, all great masters have pointed out that without the right attitude, without the right knowledge, these practices then become as though blind practices which then is made fun of by others who do not want to do anything for their self-evolution. Therefore, here it is pointed out, even we find in the Guru Granth Sahib, Guru Nanak Sahib, Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib, one beautiful verse comes to my mind. Tirat varat ardhan karat man mein kare guman nanak nehfal jatud jo kunchan isnan That if you have done pilgrimages, if you have taken vows and done fasting and you have done charity and after that instead of becoming humble, instead of actually finding that sense of satisfaction, contentment within, then you become proud, arrogant, then it is like an elephant who takes bath in the lake for an hour and then comes up and throws mud upon itself. Guru Nanak Sahib has said very beautifully that that I would take sacred baths if by that my Guru, my Lord will be pleased. That is tirat. That is austerity. Those vows, those charity by which our Guru and Lord will be pleased with us so that we open up for their grace to fall on us. It is the blind practices that later on saints went on condemning, not practices that are done with right knowledge, right attitude, 
for the right reasons. Therefore, continue our spiritual practices, but with right knowledge. And all of them are to free ourselves from the agitations of the mind and lead our mind to become a contemplative, meditative mind in which the subtlest of knowledge of the truth, which cannot be the concept of our mind, nor really can be communicated by words, we tune up to our Guru so that that knowledge gets communicated to us, that grace flows into us. Bhaja Govindam, Bhaja Govindam, Govindam Bhaja Mudhamate. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Badrani Pashyantu, Ma Kaschit Dukkha Bhag Bhavet, Asatoma Satgamaya, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya, Om Purnamada Purnamidam, Purnat Purnamudachate, Purnasya Purnamadaya, Purnameva Vashishyate, Om Shanti, 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 Harihi Om, Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Harihi Om